All right, let's see if I can do this correctly. Got to get Michael on here. How's everybody doing? So good to see you all here. All right, I'm gonna try something. I'm gonna see if if it's gonna work. Oh. oh. All right, let's see. Let's see. I'm figuring this out, everybody. I'm trying to get Michael on here, and I am. Oh, brother. And I was about to say, I couldn't figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness. All right. Hi. Okay, everybody. I'm sure you all know, but this is Michael Alvarado. And uh, he is an incredible human and an incredible musician and songwriter, uh, arranger, all the things. Um, and I'm so excited to be having him on tour with us. It's going to be incredible. Mm -hmm. I can't wait for you all to hear what he does solo. It's going to be good stuff. Woo! I'm just happy to be joining. Are you kidding me? First of all, I think this is the first time you and I have seen each other on video in maybe years. Yeah. It's been a while. It's just good to see your face. Yeah, you, you too, man. Yeah, we. Uh, for those of you who don't know, we toured with each other. I can't remember the date. You probably remember the date, but um, it was a back 2016 or 17. Yep. And um, we just became really good friends and we would uh, jam and uh, rollerblade together and all the things. So it uh, it's like super, super cool to be having you on this tour. It's like a full circle moment. Truly. I, I think people might forget how big arenas are. And I remember one day seeing that you had some rollerblades and I thought, I need to bring my rollerblades. There's no way this guy rollerblades. And then suddenly you and I are doing laps, building a friendship over the course of a year and a half. And when we parted ways, we always had this feeling of love towards each other. Yeah. So that's why this tour in particular, I'm so excited about because I get to live with you on the road which i've always wanted to do since that time and i think musically i'm inspired by you so to get on the road and see you do your thing in that way um i feel like it's going to give me that push i need now as a solo artist and yeah i, I just can't wait to, to to hear your band hear feel all right all of the songs live like it's going to be incredible yeah man i can't wait and i'm super excited for people to hear like your live set, the solo part of it. Like, I know what you can do because I've heard some of your demos. I've seen different things that you have done, but like for the people that are coming to the show to just see me are gonna be blown away. And I'm super, super excited for that. And for you to join us on stage during the set, that's gonna be super, super cool. I am like unbelievable excited for that it's been a while since i've had anyone to like play keys i don't know why i did this but um keys on stage and um it's gonna be so much fun um i believe that we have some questions in this little thing this is handy dandy um it, there's like a little question thing that you can like pull up i don't know if you can also do that there's a little question mark you see that 
And I, I might be the only one that has it. I think it's only you. Okay, okay, okay. all right. We're going to get after it. Um, okay, someone said, uh, what are you looking forward to most about tour? Um, uh, I can go first. I am looking forward to seeing you all again. Like, to be able to play shows again in front of real live people is going to be incredible. Um, it's been a while. I haven't toured for a year. Um, and Michael, I don't know how long it's been for you, so you can go next. Yeah, I would say the same thing, just to be able to, to meet some of your fans, Avi, and, and, um, also playing with you in the band on the video we put out today was really my first experience with that and finding my way on the keys behind your voice. And it felt natural. It felt right. So I want to see that in a stage setting. Dude, it was so, so good and so tasteful. When, when I listened to it late last night, I was like, oh, man. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> also, like that little, like, classical lick that you ended right at the end perfectly with my retardado was like, hey. on now. Appreciate it. Uh, yeah, man. So good. Um, all right. Let's see. There ought to be some more questions. Um, ooh, let's see. Sorry, I'm looking through these questions. Someone said, no question. Just very excited to see Michael perform again. <laughs> I had to cool. Be. Um, let's see. Uh, how long does it take to prep for a tour like this one? Um, man, uh, Weeks and weeks, maybe months. Um, you know, it starts with getting your voice back in shape, starts with getting your fingers back in shape. And then after that, you figure out your set list, um, you know, rehearse with the band, uh, collaborate with Michael. Um, you know, there are so many things to do. You know, figuring out the routing, figuring out merch, figuring out so many different things. Um, so yeah, I, I would honestly say it takes months. It takes months for sure. Um, let's see. Uh, someone just asked on the chat, are Caleb and Noah touring again? Yes, absolutely. They're coming out. Um, and they will be vibing and rocking with all of us. I'm um, excited to meet them, by the way. Yeah, dude, it's going to be good vibes all around. Um, let's see. Okay, what's your go-to snack while on the road? My ball, let you go first. Oh man, I'm right now. I have fads of snacks. I'm in my RX bar phase. I could just munch on that when I get a hunger pain, and it'll last me two hours. So I might, you might hear me nibbling on that in my bunk a time or two. I support that. I'm a nibbler as well. Uh, <laughs> let's see. What is my favorite thing to nibble on on tour? Um, I feel like I'm a big nut guy on tour. I feel like they are um, really filling um, and nothing crazy to make my stomach do weird things. Mm-hmm. So nuts are the vibe for me. Uh, yeah, that's a safe snack, by the way, because we can't eat too many risky things before getting on stage for an hour and a half. <laughs> definitely not. I've learned the, I've learned the hard way. Uh, <laughs> hard way have. Um, so <laughs> won't get into that, but that's fine. <laughs> um, okay, so there was another question. Uh, what What is your favorite flower? I'll let my, Michael go first because I'm also continuing to look for questions. That is a great question. I think right now I'm going to go with a marigold. It okay. Brings a little light in the darkness. Something about that flower feels hopeful to me. Yeah, absolutely. The first one that came to mind for me was um, uh, sunflower. Mm. And, you know, same thing brings a lot of light. Um, I love how they move with the direction of the sun. I think it's so cool. Um, and, and it's my mom's favorite flower. And I used to pick Ooh. them for her when I was younger. So 
it always means a lot to me when I see them. I love that. Um, let's see. Looking for some more questions. Avi, I also have all those questions that um, Esther sent over to you on my computer in front of me, if you need them. Uh, I think that would be way more productive. Uh, <laughs> it's a lot. You, you, you choose one and I'll choose one and we can go back and forth. Amazing. All right. So this one is from Creve 401 They said, would you ever move to another country? Ooh. Uh, you want to go first on that one? Sure. I would say absolutely. I'm open to adventure and travel. There is something necessary as long as we're in the industry that we are to remain here just for a hub for touring or musicians or whatnot. So I think I would always be drawn back to the U.S., but I could definitely live for a short stint elsewhere. Yeah, that's that, that's how I feel. I feel like, um, you know, the states are home, but I could definitely do like a year in another place or, you know, three months, six months, whatever it is. Um, I could definitely see myself doing the Netherlands. I could definitely see myself doing Japan. I could see myself doing uh, Australia or New Zealand or Iceland. Um, any one of those places, I think, could be a cool place to call home for a time. Have you been to Iceland? Dude, yes. yes. Oh. I'm not. It's on my bucket list. And, and it was by accident, too. So I was flying Iceland Air uh, to go on a family trip to Europe. And on the way back, we got delayed in Germany. And then we missed our connection in Iceland and they were like, Hey, um, so we're really sorry, but we're going to have to put you up for free at this really nice hotel and everything's going to be paid for, for the night. Um, so you're not going to be able to leave until tomorrow at 5 PM. <laughs> so, oh man, I'm really frustrated about this. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I woke up as early as I possibly could the next day, rented a car and just drove around as much of Iceland as I could have. So Perfect. I didn't get to see much of it, but what I did get to see was incredible. And I have to say that Iceland has the best KFC that I've ever had in my life. What? Care I love that. Careful now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was awesome. Um, okay. Uh, someone asked, uh, will Michael be playing any p piano on tour? Absolutely. Yeah. I'm bringing it, bringing the keyboard. I'll probably play one to two songs on the opening set with the piano, and then it will um, be reserved beautifully in the corner until Avi takes the stage. And uh, I would be honored to join you for a song or two on that bad boy. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let's see. Uh, do you got another question over there? Yeah, I do. Um, this is one from Carrie Herzler. They said, what song do you listen to that people wouldn't expect you to listen to? Ooh, mm. I got to think about this. Such a hard question. Yeah, right. Um, well, I, I feel like I, I've said this a few times, so maybe people would expect this. But for those of you who don't know, I am a huge dance hall fan. Um, yeah. So, like, I'm all about Sean Paul and like <laughs> dude, that nature. It just like it. I just love it, and it always makes me want to dance. And um, the grooves are incredible. And I, I just love it. I can't help it. I love that. I, I did not expect that, to be honest. Gotcha. <laughs> uh, for me, my, my dad is Puerto Rican. I saw somebody in the chat say hello from Puerto Rico. So I grew up on salsa music. I love, love classic salsa records. So those are in my rotation weekly. Probably something that people might not expect, but if it's old school and has a good rhythm to it, I'm probably listening to it. 
Yes. Yes, dude. I love that. Um, uh, let's see. There was one, there was a question that kind of had something to do with that, but now I'm, I can't find it. Um, oh, here we go. Uh, Michael Alvarado, do your Latin origins influence your music or other aspects to your life? Great question. Yes, absolutely. I would say the piano was definitely influenced by that. I started learning when I was seven, getting lessons, and just naturally hearing all the piano and salsa records got me excited about the instrument in general. As far as my life is concerned, I would say there's the sense of family with Latin origin that is surrounded by food. So I am obsessed with good food and having big meals. That is like my love language. So that still exists to this day. And I'm at my parents' house right now in North Carolina. And I came home and my mom automatically had like cookies and some a delicious meal waiting for me and passed it off. And I went, oh, I needed that. So yes, I think that runs through very thick uh, with the influence for sure. I love that. Man, we're gonna have to have some big meals on tour. That's pretty much all I do besides <laughs> music. Perfect. I love that. Yeah, man. And food and music. Someone just commented that, but that really is a lot. Um, yeah. Uh, any more questions on there that you're liking? Yeah. So I'm I'm actually curious about this myself. Banning dot Nikki says, "What was your inspiration for Good Good Love?" Ooh. Ooh, okay, so Good Good Love is about a love that you just cannot get enough of. We're mm. like fresh and new, and it's like, it it's almost, well, I won't say that. It's just something you can't get enough of, and that is the inspiration behind it. Um, yeah, that's the vibe. I like that. Five. I know the feeling. Yeah, absolutely. So how much to know what songs? Ooh, okay. Well, I'm not going to spoil it, but this says, what songs will Michael be singing with Avi on tour? I'm not going to spoil all of them, uh, but we're de definitely going to do Good Good Love together. Um, and I will just say that for now. <laughs> Perfect. All right, this, this question comes from Emily KB789. They said, what solo career, career advice could Avi give Michael on him start, starting his solo journey? Dang. Man, well, it's a wild ride. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but, but in all seriousness, um, take some time, time to find yourself musically that that's what i would say and not that you specifically need to know that this is more just in general like for anyone that's starting a solo career that they haven't either done that before or they've been in a group before whatever it is like just take a second mm -hmm. and find yourself find what it is that lights you up and get after it you know mm -hmm. um that, that's that's what i would say to that point does it morph does it evolve as you go absolutely and i i feel like any and maybe i shouldn't say this but like any person is going to evolve and is going to change their sound but i feel like there is a part when you're first starting out that there is a lot of evolution mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot of like digging into it especially when it's and I'm just going to toot your horn for a second, like, especially when it's someone that that really could do many things musically. Um, and probably loves a lot of things musically. It's tough to choose. Yeah. Like, it really is tough to choose. Um, and and I think that it's really about, about kind of where your passion and your strengths cross Ooh. you know um and i and i think that that is different for everybody 
Yeah. Um, yeah. I love, love that. I'm actually going to make a note of that so I don't forget. Where your passion and strength cross. Yeah. I haven't I quite mean, found it yet, but I think this tour will be a great time to learn that. Absolutely. And in front of a live audience where you're getting feedback every night, whether they're like talking to you, you can feel the energy, yeah. you know, um, and you get to try new things. I mean, that's how I continue to develop my sound. Like, I think when I got into my solo career, I really just wanted to show a different side of myself and, and, and present my passion in a way that lit me up. Mm. And I think the more that I got in front of people, the more that. I started finding new parts of myself that really locked into what I enjoy doing live mm. and what I could do vocally or musically. Um, and I think that that was invaluable to be able to go on stage and, and have that energy because a lot of my stuff was going to be, you know, really laid back and, uh, you know, cause that, that I love that type of stuff. Um, but also, I do love really rocking music. And when I did do some of that stuff live, because, you you know, you can't have only laid back stuff. Um, when I did it live, it gave me a new passion for that type of music and how to, how I could create it. Yeah. Not how I see other people create it. Not trying to match what they do, but like, what do what is my specific skill set and how do i present that in a way that is specifically yeah. me you yeah. know um with 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 my strengths forward um yeah it's it, it's a really fun thing to do yeah and, I, and to that point i've noticed some of your new songs that you've been releasing do you have a bit more up upbeat feel to it and a little bit more rocking and did you design it that way for your live show or did that just naturally come out in the studio for you um i wanted to do something that stretched my boundaries more i wanted to do something a little more rocking a little bit more out of my comfort zone mm -hmm. but my live show inspired that because i started doing more rocking stuff live just like making my arrangements even more rocking sure. and um it really inspired me to write more things of that nature to be able to kind of expand that set list and have some more things of that nature okay. um so yeah that's how it happened i'm excited to see that live yeah man it's gonna be fun um let's see there was a question that i saw there's so many good questions in here i can't even pick there really are <laughs> this one asked um from banning.nikki again they said has michael ever uh been a part of an acapella group the answer to that is yes in high school and in college i've always been obsessed with the art of acapella um yeah so i think even just in the video we put out today like for those who who saw it avi sent me the version of him singing i got a woman incredible and the way your voice came through the camera and i thought where can i fit in this picture harmonies it's got to be harmonies because then i'm covering like the upper frequency range that you're not hitting either with the guitar or your voice mm -hmm. and as i'm putting it together i'm a little nervous because avi you have so much knowledge when it comes to vocal parts and arrangements and that sort of thing but it just really worked in the big picture and I think that's just always a passion I've had, and obviously you've had um, for years, especially with Acapella Academy as well. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I think it's only only right that we would team up in this way because we do have a lot of similar interests in the past. Uh, in the past, and now seeing it come to life now is really cool. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and and I remember us talking about you being an acapella, and you technically were in an acapella group when you were on tour, though, because you guys. <laughs> that's true. That's true. We just joined for a song. It was a vibe. It was a vibe. Um, okay, let's see. Yeah, and also, dude, those harmonies that you chose were primo. And then the octaves. Careful now. <laughs> <laughs> How do you? Ooh, that's good. Um. 
Jacqueline McCullen says, will you be doing any shows in Texas? Ooh, yes. In fact, I believe we have two shows in Texas. Uh, Michael will be at both of those and all the rest of the tour. He's going to be on the entire tour with us. Um, <laughs> that's going to be awesome. It's going to be a happy family. And, uh, but yeah, two shows in Texas. I believe we're doing Dallas and Houston. Um, and, and Esther confirms. So it, it is cr- And something about Texas. This crowds always bring the energy. I'm really excited for those. Yeah, man. They are always down to get down. Mm-hmm. For sure. um, and, and the venues that we're playing are really, really cool venues. And it's going to be a good thing. Looking through. Ooh. This one's from Drew.O. Has your voice changed over the years? My voice has definitely changed over the years. Um, it keeps getting lower and um, it can, continues to, I feel like, get a bit bigger and have more depth over time. Um, in the upper register, especially, mm-hmm. I, I notice more of a change than I do in my lower register. My lower register has kind of been the same, except for it getting a bit lower. Um, and also, I think that I've been trying to stretch it um, to do different things than I have in the past. So, um, absolutely, yes, my voice has changed over the years, and and, and it'll it'll continue to change. A bassist voice doesn't stop maturing until he's thirty six. So um, I still got a couple more years. Now, when you say it's gotten lower, do you know an exact amount of notes that you've been able to reach down now versus maybe 10 years ago? Yeah. So I think like. So my overall lowest note is like maybe a half step lower, Mm -hmm. but the amount of power that I'm able to get in some of the lower notes mm. and certain notes that I'm able to have all the time. Cause like for basses, there are just days where you have great low notes and there are days where you have not great low notes. Jeez. And I think that the days where I don't have great low notes, um, I'm even lower than I was before. Mm. Uh, so, so, you know, usually I, I would have like a low B, um, you know, like in, high school or slash college and then now it's i i constantly have like a low a uh, or lower um and so yeah not huge changes but definitely visible and i can feel them as well Mm -hmm. almost like the consistency of you hitting that entire low register is more now would you say it's even fuller than maybe 10 years ago those particular notes yeah, for sure. For sure. That's cool. Yeah, I'd say for me, maybe the higher range has improved the most. Like, because in growing up, I never really practiced or studied that. And then um, I have a daughter, for those here that don't know, and I sing in my falsetto to her at night before she goes to bed because the, I didn't want the lower register to, like, wake her up or, you know, I wanted to lull her. So after five years of doing that, suddenly, like, my head voice has a lot more strength than it used to. And, yeah, I'm excited to utilize that on tour. Yeah. I love it. Um, yeah, man, I've always been a huge fan of your head voice and your falsetto. Oh, um, you. Just that, like, air that you put through it, the texture that it has, and the sound that it has, and the frequencies that it picks up is very pleasing. Very oh, thank you. Yeah, man. Um, let's see. Are there any more? We could probably do a few more. Sure. Mm. This one comes from M. Jolie, 2204, if you're here. 
What inspired both Michael and Avi to become musicians? Ooh. Okay. Uh, Michael, you can go first if you want, or I can go first. <laughs> sure, I'll go. I also saw one in the chat that says, um, what inspired you both to grow your beards? <laughs> Ooh. Well, we can start with that one if you we'll want. We'll start with that one. I would say Avi's quite, quite further than I am along the process. <laughs> um, okay, so what inspired me to start growing my beard? Um, I think that I always wanted to. It was just a matter of when I was able to. Sure. Um, like, I feel like in high school, I could grow facial hair, but I didn't have that connection between my mustache and my beard. Mm. Um, and I was really trying to play that. So um, I was clean shaven for a while. And then it started filling in. And I was like, we ought to let this grow. And then I continued to let it grow. And here we are. That is the problem area, right? When you're first starting is that connection spot. For and it sure. almost gets in your head, like, is it worth having if I can't make the whole thing complete? Yeah. You know? You that's know? how I, I was like, I'm not doing it. Not until I can really do it. All right. So then now you have to share, are there any secrets to keeping it healthy? Because yours looks very healthy. Ooh, um, I, I wash and condition mine. Um, and I do beard oil at times. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's what I do. I do something similar as well. I have this this scrub from Goop. It's like a salt scrub, and I'll get in there, and it really helps eliminate, like, beard dandruff, which usually is a problem for people as they're growing. So that mix with the beard oil is really helpful. Absolutely. Yeah, I got to keep it hydrated. Mm -hmm. And what was, the, what was the other question, the big one? Oh. <laughs> oh, it was what inspired both you and I to become musicians. Oh, oh that old thing. Okay. Um so do you want to go first or you want me to i'd love to hear yours okay cool um so i was not like super in love with music from a young age um it like i i always really liked it and i enjoyed listening to it um and i was in band um and i played trumpet and and i was good at that and it, and it felt good to be good at that and and that was all fun but it was when i left band and joined choir and really when i joined the top choir of my high school that i really fell in love with music it's when i started making really good high quality music and there was nothing in my life that had ever made me feel like that before um and i also feel like i had a sense of um uh, what's the word? Not belonging, but um, I can't think of the word right, right now. But but oh, I I had a sense of identity. I was mm. like the lowest bass in choir, and and I really enjoyed that. And um, you know, I, I feel like it was the first time that I had that before. Before I was just kind of like, you know, wandering through life, just like enjoying it. And yeah. then I fell into music, and I was like, oh, this is my thing. Like I. I really love this, um, and and I can't see myself wanting to do anything else because for for me, I'm not going to do anything that I'm not passionate. About. I, I I actually can't do it. Um, so that that was the thing that had lit me up the most in life. And the deeper that I got into it, the deeper that I loved it. And um, so yeah, I think that was kind of the catalyst. I love that yeah similar for me started with piano because i heard my sister practicing uh she was playing like some debussy and i thought i want to do that i was only six and a half so my mom put me in lessons we hated the structure of learning and going to class and all of that stuff but she gave me this egg timer and i'd have to set it for 30 minutes to practice every day and I would speed through my assigned pieces and just get them out of the way. But then the timer still had 20 minutes left. So I just would sit there trying to fool my mom that I was playing the piece, but I was writing something because it was way more interesting. So after eight years of killing 20 minutes of time every day, suddenly I'm a songwriter and I really enjoyed that part of it. And in, in high school, I started a funk band. We had a lead singer. 
he got sick and couldn't do the show. And they're like, who's gonna sing? And I'm just back there on the keys with a big afro, like, hey, you know, vibing. And I was like, I guess I'll do it. Give me the mic. And then from that point on, I realized I could actually be a solo artist. And I was hooked ever since. I love that. That's amazing. Man, good thing that guy got sick. <laughs> no. I should send him a thank you letter wherever he is. Dude, you really should. But like, man, pick <laughs> that one. That was pretty awesome of you. <laughs> Getting sick. <laughs> yeah, I just sent him a get well soon card. <laughs> Well, soon, hopefully, after all these years. Uh, um, <laughs> um, well, y'all, I had an amazing time doing this. I feel like um, it was a lot of fun to, I feel like Michael and I kind of caught up and it, it was amazing. And for all of you that joined, thank you so much for like being here and supporting. There's like almost 400 people here just like hanging out with us. And that's like, huge to us um it would be amazing if you all were to see us on tour either way we're just happy that you're here and support us um it means everything to us and i am so happy and honored that michael is coming out on this tour and um i really really am excited for you all to see the show it's going to be a lot of fun thanks for having me avi i'm so excited to join you to everyone watching, please come. You're not going to want to miss this show, especially seeing Avi's band live. It's going to be incredible. And I can't wait. Yeah. All right, y'all. We love you. We will see you soon. And uh, there will be more from us soon. But uh, for now, we will be signing off. And we're sending you all our love. We'll see you on tour. Bye.